Hello guys, welcome to yet another video. So today we're going to explore uh, something with the Terraform. So though I'm not actually teaching you how we write the code, but I'm keeping all the code in the GitHub so that you can actually clone the repository and then, you know, uh, go about it. So, so this is all the Terraform code that I've written and this is the repository. I'll be uh, posting uh, uh, this particular address in the video description uh, before beforehand I wanted to show uh, there's no RDS instance or maybe we only have uh, uh, three VPCs here and then we have we only have particular three instances running so um, part of this uh, particular process we will be creating uh, some of these things right VPC and its components subnets route tables NAT gateway um, any EC2 instance with the name EC2 instance and then EIP with the NAT gateway, RDS MySQL instance and security groups to access EC2 and then MySQL. So basically, uh, uh, I mean about three, four months back, uh, a person walked up to me and then asked about Terraform training. So then um, I had some time then. So I've actually designed a very simple use case so that uh, um, with the progression of uh, learning Terraform, I can also help him uh, uh, pursuing uh, some of this like very basic use case. So basically, uh, it's like a two-tier uh, application. I, I did uh, try to um, find an application, but then I couldn't find anything. Uh, so then I've decided to use WordPress instead. So we have public and then private subnets created part of this particular uh, process. And then uh, we have public instance, uh, public subnets where we will be keeping our EC2 instance. And then we have a couple of, uh, or maybe three of them, uh, private subnets are created. And then we're creating a subnet group out of that. And then we're keeping our RDS instance there, right? And then EC2 instance will have a user data where you will actually have um, uh, some kind of commands which actually downloads. Uh, I mean, uh, let me just clone the code and then now. Uh, walk through the code instead here git clone i'm using like a git uh, at the red git here so i add my ssh keys in there um, but otherwise uh, you can pretty much use uh, https git clone HTML. that should work then once this is all done um, you just say cd uh, terraform aws folder and once so let me just add this particular thing into Visual Studio so that you can see it well. So uh, let me show some of these. Right. So this by default uses the EU West one. If you wanted to change the region, feel free to change it. Um, I've tested this on Mac and the Linux. Uh, everything was, uh, I mean, both of them were, I mean, it, it was working intact. The only thing is like you got to have AWS CLI configured. If you don't have AWS CLI configured, <clears throat> feel free to add uh, this provider uh, access um, key and then secret ID uh, part of this particular provider, right? So then uh, that should work and it will be creating a key pair as well. And uh, the important thing that you should be uh, looking at is like uh, we are not gonna uh, use particular AMI um, no matter whether we, uh, what are the region that you actually run the this particular um, uh, code uh, it finds an AMI I mean, uh, dynamically uh, based on this particular um, I mean, values here and then uh, once that is done, the tag is like easy to instance. You can actually interpolate uh, with the, with some of the other things that I've done here. Um, uh, let me just show if there's an inter yeah. So something like that, right? So I've used interpolation most of the places. I think that this one I've missed it. So maybe this is kind of improvement that you can actually put that the tag name should contain the stack name. So just in case uh, if you miss tag um, uh, state file, you may have to remove these uh, things manually. So, and you can also put remote uh, uh, backend for this particular code. Uh, I don't want to be showing uh, a lot of my AWS account to you. So that's the reason that I've actually 
uh, you know, uh, didn't add remote back and other things. And I've also, I haven't used count or uh, any kind of looping part of this code just because I wanted to make it very simple so that it, uh, I, I can come with the next example, which is obviously already, already like a forget example where I was like using counts and other things that should uh, fall into your place uh, pretty soon. Uh, let me, uh, I got to find some time for it. Um, that's it. And then um, I've also used provisioners. So provisioners, ex uh, I mean, I've used multiple provisioners, like a couple of uh, file, file, remote exec, and then file again, remote exec. So it executes in the order that the code has been written. So it actually uh, spins up EC2 instance and then it executes the user data. Once that is uh, successful, the user data is completed. Then it it then copies the user data into uh, this particular destination. I don't know if it is even needed, uh, but then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Uh, there's another particular provisioners. Um, there's a template file, which you'll be using. Like, uh, as I said, right, there's configuration file for PHP. Uh, pretty simple, but the only thing I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a PHP guy anyways So the only thing that you should be changing in order to uh, have a, uh, In order to establish a connection between EC2 instance that you're creating and then the MySQL instance uh, That you're creating part of this uh, uh, t t Tutorial is like DB name and uh, DB details so that the configuration file actually um, <coughs> Let's uh, um, Let's like connection between uh, EC2 and then uh, uh, RDS instance. So I've actually parameterized that with a template file <coughs> here, and then uh, I'm using the output, which is like a rendered uh, output file, and then making a file in the in the temp directory on the particular machine which you, which we're creating, which is like EC2 instance uh, in this case. And then we are using remote exec, uh, um, I mean, copying that particular file from the temp location to this particular location. This is where we got to uh, read the, I mean, we should have file in order to have a, a successful WordPress. And I'm, I'm just like, while referring this, I don't think so we, we even uh, require this too, but um, but it will, the code works fine for now. So I'll, I'll have a look at it um, later. Um, this could be useless, uh, but then, uh, it's all working so let's not uh, touch anything now so uh, this is about it uh, let me also show you this uh, i think i've shown you that there's no extra resources here there's no db running uh, only three instances three vpcs and uh, only three instances running uh, <clears throat> terraform in it terraform in it actually so uh, when you have a provider right when you say there's a provider so this is like a uh, some kind of code module. It actually downloads when you say Terraform in it, and then Terraform plan. Terraform plan is like uh, Terraform plan says you what are all the resources um, you will be adding with this particular Terraform code. So which is like a cool feature um, uh, that Terraform has compared to any other uh, infrastructure as a code tools. And then uh, Terraform apply. Auto approve. Auto approve is um, without interacting, right? If you don't say auto approve, and then if you just say Terraform apply, um, um, it will ask you, do you want to proceed? And then you need to say yes, and then uh, y yes yes, and then uh, you, it'll proceed ahead. I don't want to be interacting with that. Anyways, uh, I'm just uh, executing this all together. End of this, uh, you should have an output. Uh, how do you actually connect to the inst instance maybe how do you actually get into the ec2 how do you actually even uh, access rds some of these things uh, that you um, get i mean it's like terraform unit is working now and then it is trying to download aws provider and then template template provider is because we've used template file it's like a separate provider for terraform so if you have any questions uh, um, while doing this uh, don't hesitate I'll, I'll try to put my maybe email idea or maybe WhatsApp number, part of the group description. So there are quite a, now I think a Terraform plan is working. There are quite a, quite a few resources, I think about 22. Um, it is still creating, okay. It's in creation mode now. Let's find the plan results, right? 
So yeah, it says the plan says 22 resources to add. It takes about a few minutes because uh, the NAD instances and uh, the RDS instance, it takes uh, quite a while. I think uh, uh, NAD and RDS is like um, um, pretty much it takes about uh, definitely three minutes or four minutes easily. So, um, sorry. Uh, the code, right? And uh, if you if you have uh, find uh, any issues with a particular readme, I'll try to, I mean, I, I couldn't find time. Uh, I couldn't find much time. So I've only um, put in some kind of meaningful notes. I'll try to see if, if there's uh, some part of the readme isn't good and maybe you, and the feedback is allowed. <clears throat> And then please do uh, subscribe my video and then uh, um, give a star uh, for this repository if you really like it and then uh, uh, if it is useful for you. And that would really help me or uh, keep me motivated to uh, do another videos as well. And then uh, let's get into this particular thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pause the video now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, I mean, it, it's unnecessary. It'll, it'll be like few, few extra minutes that you may need to uh, wait uh, to see the results. Um, I'll just pass the video and then uh, uh, I'll resume it uh, once everything is completed, right? So we've had um, all infrastructure provision successfully, and then we we are seeing the outputs now. Um, like I said, right, uh, just to make your life easy, I've just actually added these outputs. If you want to get into that particular instance, uh, you can get into like that. And then if you wanted to access uh, the MySQL, right, you have to be in the EC2. So uh, I've made, uh, this is like, remember that this is in a private subnet. You cannot access this from anywhere outside the world. You have to access this from the EC2 instance. That is how I've actually made security groups. So if you say like that, so now uh, show database, show table, oh sorry, uh, use uh, mydb, mydb is a db name, I think it's a bad name, uh, maybe you can actually improve that with some other name, use db and then uh, show tables, uh, I don't know, select star from tab, I'm not sure. Okay, let me just uh, find out uh, how do we know the tables in particular DB. Yeah, not everybody knows everything, right? I think um, I think so. Uh, for now, I think it's um, it's not really important. I think that you can actually try to find that. I'm, I'm trying to exit the EC2 instance. Uh, the, this is how anyways you log into that EC2 instance or maybe into that particular database. As I said, uh, they, you can log into that particular database only uh, after logging into that particular EC2 instance. And then um, uh, let's finally, uh, this is AMI ID, that particular dynamic, uh, uh, the code as, as I've shown you guys. This code actually returned that particular AMI ID. This changes based on the region that you if you select different region or if you uh, just put different region in uh, uh, what is that uh, yeah, variables, uh, they should change. And this is how uh, you actually access, right? If you can access uh, the MySQL front page, yeah. So it is showing you uh, what you wanted to see. Uh, so far, uh, whatever you've been doing, uh, has been successful and then um, you can continue. I'm not a WordPress admin uh, just to go further. Um, this this like um, I wanted to cover up until this point and then uh, we've, we've done that. So uh, I hope uh, that you're feeling uh, that you've learned something today. Uh, please do uh, like, subscribe the video and also uh, please, as I said, uh, uh, you can go to this particular repository and then uh, click a star here so that um, uh, it keeps me motivated uh, to do the future videos. Thank you so much and then have a wonderful uh, day ahead guys. Bye.